Hi everyone, this is Victor here. Welcome to the Intelligent Investor channel. We're going to analyze Microsoft stock in this video. As of now, Microsoft is one of the largest positions in my growth stock portfolio here. I have invested in Microsoft for several years already, and is a multi-bagger stock now. Microsoft's current CEO, Satya Nadella, has done an outstanding job running the company since 2014. If we compare Microsoft stock with the S&P 500 index, you can see Microsoft has outperformed the S&P 500 by a large margin in the past 5 years. Microsoft stock grew 412%, while the S&P 500 grew 105% in the past 5 years. As an investor, you may ask these questions. Is Microsoft one of the best dividend growth stocks out there? What are Microsoft's long-term growth prospects? And what are the risks we should know about? I will answer these questions by covering these topics in this video. What is Microsoft's business model? Microsoft's three long-term growth catalysts. Microsoft's two risks we should know about. What is Microsoft's free interest rate per share? And will I be buying more Microsoft stock? If you like this video, make sure to smash the like button, subscribe, and turn on the notification button. I will continue to make many excellent stock analysis and portfolio analysis videos every week that will help you become a great investor. Also, if you like this channel and want to support it, check out my Patreon blog in the video description and become a VIP patron. You'll be able to follow all the stocks I'm buying for the long term, watch exclusive investing weekly videos for Patreon members only, and download the latest intrinsic value calculators for all the stocks I'm analyzing so you will know when a stock is currently overvalued, fairly valued, or undervalued. The link is in the video description. Take a look, let's start. Microsoft has many products and services. Microsoft's most important product used to be selling its Windows operating system to consumers and OEMs. Now Microsoft has expanded to many subscription-based and cloud-based products and services including Microsoft 365, Office 365, Microsoft Azure, which is its cloud business, Microsoft Dynamics, Microsoft SQL Server, Xbox consoles, service tablets and laptops, LinkedIn, and Bing search engine. If you look at this here, you can see all these revenue sources from different products and services. Many of them are subscription and cloud business revenues. Microsoft has three main business segments, productivity and business processes, intelligent cloud, and personal computing. Intelligent cloud, which is Microsoft's cloud business, earns the most revenues and operating income. Intelligent cloud also has the highest growth rate compared with other business segments. Most of Microsoft's revenues are from server and cloud services, office services, windows, gaming, and also LinkedIn. All these businesses now have annual revenues of over $10 billion each. Microsoft has very stable and consistent revenue growth almost every quarter because it has switched many products to subscription and cloud-based services for both consumers and commercial clients. This is from Morningstar. It shows Microsoft had very consistent revenue growth, operating income growth, operating cash flow growth, and free cash flow growth every year in the past three years. During the same period, Microsoft had been repurchasing shares every year and therefore reduced the number of shares outstanding. This benefits all existing shareholders because of Microsoft's increasing earnings and increasing dividends. Right before making this video, Microsoft announced it will increase its quarterly dividend by 11% over the previous quarter's dividend. The board of directors also approved a new share repurchase program up to $60 billion in share repurchase. All this will benefit long-term Microsoft shareholders. Microsoft currently has a forward dividend yield of 0.83%. This is much lower compared with many other dividends stocks such as Intel. In comparison, Intel has a forward dividend yield of 2.56%. Microsoft has a very low dividend yield because it is still a growth company or what we call a growth stock that has 20% plus revenue growth each quarter. Generally, a company such as Intel should pay higher dividends to shareholders if it has very low revenue growth rates every quarter. In comparison, Microsoft still has a double-digit revenue growth rate almost every quarter. For example, in the most recent Q4 2021 quarter, Microsoft's total revenue grew 21% year over year, and its operating income still grew 42% year over year. Microsoft is a very profitable business and has a strong balance sheet. For example, in the most recent Q4 2021 quarter, it had a 41% operating margin. It also has a strong balance sheet with 130 billion of cash. This is more than enough to pay off all its long-term debts. Now, Microsoft has many growth catalysts. I will talk about its three long-term growth catalysts here. I believe Microsoft's most important long-term growth catalyst is its intelligent cloud business, which is primarily driven by its Microsoft Azure. This business also has other services such as SQL Server, Windows Server, Visual Studio, Client Access Licenses, and GitHub. 
As far as I know, Microsoft Azure is the most important and largest revenue driver in Microsoft's intelligent cloud business. In the recent Q4 2021 quarter, you can see Microsoft's intelligent cloud business had the highest 17.4 billion revenue and the highest 30% year-over-year growth compared with other business segments. As of now, there is a huge demand in cloud computing, especially in infrastructure as a service, because more companies, enterprises, and government organizations are moving their services and processes to the the cloud in order to improve their efficiencies and to stay relevant in the current digital first market. The public cloud market in infrastructure as a service IaaS, is dominated by three hyperscale cloud providers, Amazon AWS, Microsoft Azure, and Google Cloud. According to this Canalys article here, the big three largest cloud providers had a total market share of 61% in Q2 2021. Amazon AWS still had the largest market share of 31%. Microsoft Azure had a 22% market share, and Google Cloud had an 8% market share. You can also see the worldwide cloud infrastructure services spend have been growing consistently above 30% each year for the past two years. Personally, I believe the worldwide spend on cloud services, especially in infrastructure as a service, will continue to go at double digit rates for many years because more companies and enterprises are accelerating their digital transformation in every aspect of their businesses, such as working from home more or communicating with clients via video conferencing. They will need to move more business processes and services services to the cloud, especially if they want to scale their businesses and to stay competitive. Traditionally, if a company wanted to expand its IT infrastructure to support its growing business, it had to spend millions of dollars in data center hardware and equipment upfront. It costs a lot of money and human resources for the company to build and maintain its own data centers and service on premise. Now, instead of building your own data centers, you can use the three largest cloud providers, Amazon AWS, Microsoft Azure, and Google Cloud State data centers and cloud services. Generally, you pay these cloud providers under a pay-as-you-go model. This means you don't need to invest millions of dollars in data centers upfront. For example, you only need to pay Microsoft Azure's cloud services for the amount of compute, storage, and network you actually use. As far as I know, most companies that offer services online, especially the software-as-a-service SaaS businesses, use these three largest cloud providers, data centers, and servers. In my opinion, I believe it will be very hard for new companies to compete with AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud. The next largest cloud provider is Alibaba Cloud. But Alibaba Cloud's core business is mainly in China. This means Microsoft Azure, Amazon AWS, and Google Cloud have great economic modes that can protect their cloud businesses from most competitors. Also, I believe Microsoft's biggest competitive advantage is that it also owns Windows, Office 365, Microsoft 365, Microsoft Dynamics, and OneDrive. This means businesses that are already well invested in Microsoft's ecosystem will likely choose Microsoft Azure over Amazon AWS and Google Cloud. If you look at the most recent quarterly released here, you can see Microsoft's commercial cloud revenue have been growing consistently every quarter in the past five quarters. If you want to know how much Microsoft's commercial revenue is expected to grow over the next 12 months, you have to look at its remaining performance obligations here. These remaining performance obligations show how much revenue Microsoft will recognize over the next 12 months. Management said they expect approximately 50% of this revenue will be recognized over the next 12 months and the remainder thereafter. According to this Table, you can see Microsoft's remaining performance obligations have been growing very consistently every quarter. This is a very good sign because it shows Microsoft is acquiring new commercial customers and its commercial revenue is increasing every quarter. In terms of outlook, management said this in the recent Q4 2021 earnings call. Accelerating digital transformation and consistent strong execution should drive another quarter of growing commitment to our Microsoft Cloud. In commercial bookings, our core annuity sales most should drive healthy growth on a growing expiry base even against a strong prior year comparable. Our outlook for fiscal 2022 reflects this with healthy double-digit revenue and operating income growth. I believe Microsoft's second long-term growth catalyst is its subscription-based Microsoft 365 and Office 365 services. This page shows Microsoft's productivity business revenue have been growing consistently in the past five quarters. The main revenue drivers are Microsoft 365, Office 365, and Dynamics 365. 
365, which are all subscription-based services. Also, you can see Microsoft 365 consumer subscribers have been growing consistently every quarter. In the recent Q4 quarter, Microsoft 365 consumer subscribers have grown to 51.9 million. In my opinion, I believe Microsoft 365 is a very sticky product for many consumers, businesses, and large enterprises because it includes popular Office apps such as Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and Outlook that are used by most consumers and businesses. Microsoft 365 also includes OneDrive storage space. You can access all these apps across different devices. For businesses, in addition to the Office apps, Microsoft 365 also includes Microsoft Teams and these cloud-based services here. To use Microsoft 365, whether you're a consumer or a business or a large enterprise, you will pay a monthly subscription fee or an annual subscription fee as shown here. Now, based on my experience at work, once you use Microsoft 365's Office applications, OneDrive, and also Microsoft Teams, it will be very hard to switch to other competing Office applications, even if they are free or cheaper. I believe this is one of the main reasons Microsoft's productivity business and its Microsoft 365 subscribers have been growing consistently almost every quarter as shown here. I believe Microsoft's third long-term growth catalyst is its gaming business, specifically Xbox console and cloud gaming. Microsoft reports its gaming revenue, including Xbox Game Console sales, video game sales, and Xbox Game Pass sales in its more personal computing business segment. According to the recent Q4 earnings, you can see this business segment had the lowest revenue growth rate of 9% compared with other business segments. One of the main reasons is that Windows OEM sales decreased year over year in the Q4 quarter. According to this article, the video game industry is already larger than the US sports and movies industry combined. I believe the video game industry will continue to grow for many years even after the pandemic is over because more consumers are playing more games on their smartphones, their game consoles, and their gaming PCs. Right now, there are three major players making game consoles. Sony's PlayStation, Microsoft's Xbox, and Nintendo Switch. Microsoft recently released its Xbox Cloud Gaming platform which lets you play over 100 console games on any device using Xbox Cloud. This is very similar to Netflix streaming movies to your TV or your phone. You just need to pay a subscription fee of $16.99 per month. Then you can play console games on your Android phone or your iPhone through cloud streaming. Personally, I believe cloud gaming will be a large market for Microsoft in, in the upcoming years. As of now, cloud gaming is still in the very early growth stage. Let's talk about the risks. The first risk is obviously competition. Microsoft's cloud business biggest competitors are Amazon AWS and Google Cloud. Amazon AWS is still the market leader in public cloud services with the largest market share in infrastructure as a service. Now, I don't work in the IT industry, so I wouldn't know how competitive Microsoft Azure is compared with Amazon AWS. But based on this article here, AWS seems to have a lot more features and is more flexible than Azure. AWS extensive partner ecosystem is much larger than Azure's. AWS also has an edge in government cloud offerings. In comparison, Azure's biggest advantage is that it supports hybrid cloud better than AWS. According to Gartner report here, you can see AWS is still far ahead of Azure and Google Cloud in infrastructure as a service, IaaS and platform as a service, PaaS. Alibaba Cloud is now the fourth largest public cloud provider, but most of Alibaba Cloud's clients are businesses that operate in China. Because of the continuous political tensions between the US and China, I do not think Alibaba Cloud will be able to compete with AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud outside of China. I believe Microsoft's second biggest risk is its potential antitrust issues. In the past, Microsoft was fined multiple times by the European Union Commission for anti-competitive behavior, such as forcing users to use Internet Explorer and not giving users other web browser options. Microsoft is releasing the upcoming Windows 11. Many beta users have reported that Windows 11 has made switching the default browsers much harder compared with the previous Windows 10. If this is the case, Microsoft could face more antitrust litigations again in the upcoming years. Time will tell. So what is Microsoft's free interest rate per share? First, I define Microsoft's free interest rate as its future free cash flows discounted to the present day. I always use this interest rate calculator to estimate a stock's free interest rate because I believe it's important not to overpay a stock, meaning either buy a stock of an outstanding business when it's fairly valued or when it's undervalued. If you want this calculator, Later, you can download it in my Patreon blog in the video description. Here are the key assumptions I used. The discount rate is 7.5%, which is slightly higher than the 7.1% cost of equity provided by Finbox.com. If you want to be more conservative, you can use a 
higher discount rate of 10% or more. Based on my estimate and the long-term growth catalyst I talked about earlier, I believe Microsoft's free cash flow should grow between 15% and 25% each year over the next five years. To calculate the terminal value at the end of year five, we're using both the perpetual growth and exit multiple models. Then I take the average of both models to calculate the terminal value at the end of year five. Let's go over these three case scenarios quickly. The worst case, the normal case, and the best case scenarios. Under the worst case scenario, we're using compound annual growth rate CAG of 15%. If we project Microsoft's free cash flows to the next five years and discount the free cash flows to the present day, then Microsoft's intrinsic wealth should be around 1.927 trillion for the entire company or $256.46 per share. Under the normal case scenario, we're using a compound annual growth rate of 20%. If we project Microsoft's free cash flows to the next five years and discount the free cash flows to the present day, then Microsoft's intrinsic value should be around 2.35 trillion for the entire company, or $313.03 per share. Under the best case scenario, we're using a compound annual growth rate of 25%. If we project Microsoft's free cash flows to the next five years and discount the free cash flows to the present day, then Microsoft's intrinsic value should be around 2.85 trillion for the entire company or $379.49 per share. Based on my estimate, I believe Microsoft's fair interest value should be around 2.35 trillion for the entire company or $313.03 per share. This means Microsoft is slightly undervalued at the time of making this video. So will I be buying more Microsoft shares? Yes, I will continue to buy more Microsoft shares for the long term because I like Microsoft's cloud business, its subscription-based office and Microsoft 365 services, and its gaming business. Even if Microsoft is already the second largest company by market cap in the world. I believe its cloud business will continue to grow for many years because of the increasing demand for cloud computing, especially in infrastructure as a service and platform as a service. Personally, based on the estimate I talked about earlier, I believe Microsoft's fair interest rate should be around 2.35 trillion for the entire company or $313.03 per share at the time of making this video. Now, all these estimates are only my opinions and my analysis based on my research. They are not financial advice. So make sure you always do your research and do your extra due diligence first before investing in anything. If you like this video, smash the like button, subscribe, and turn on the notification button. I will continue to make many excellent stock analysis and portfolio analysis videos every week that will help you become a great investor. Also, if you like this channel and want to support it, check out my Patreon blog in the video description and become a VIP patron. You'll be able to follow all the stocks I'm buying for the long term, watch exclusive investing weekly videos for Patreon members only, and download the latest intrinsic value calculators for all the stocks I'm analyzing so you will know when a stock is currently overvalued, fairly valued, or undervalued. Thank you for watching this video and supporting our channel. This is Victor from the Intelligent Investor channel and I will see you in the next video.